dear students welcome again in the bio inorganic chemistry lecture and in this lecture again we will discuss about one heme protein and uh, this is the part 5 of heme proteins and in this lecture we will discuss about hemoglobin so the structure of hemoglobin as well as the functions of hemoglobin in the previous lecture, we have discussed about the myoglobin. So, if we uh, understand the structure of myoglobin, then we can easily understand the structure of hemoglobin. So, hemoglobin is the tetrameric protein. So, it is the tetrameric protein. That is, it is the approximate tetramer of myoglobin. So, it is approximate tetramer of myoglobin and its molecular weight is 64,450 Dalton. Approximately 6.2 gram of hemoglobin produced and destroyed in body every day. So, in an average 6.2 gram to 5 gram of uh, hemoglobin it produced and destroyed in the body uh, every day and it contains uh, because it is approximately tetramer uh, uh, of that of myoglobin. So, it contains 4 heme and 4 protein chains. Uh, we have uh, discussed about the myoglobin structure where we find that uh, this uh, uh, the myoglobin was containing one heme and one protein chain and so because it is a tetrameric type so it is having four heme and four protein chains protein is generally the globin protein now again if we see the heme of hemoglobin then we will find that this is a fe porphyrin compound so there is again fe because it is uh, almost tetramer of myoglobin so it has a fe porphyrin porphyrin is actually again we i am repeating the structure of porphyrin so porphyrin is what it is the cyclic compound which is formed by the fusion of four pyrrole rings that are linked by double bond ch single bond bridge that is methane group and the four pyrrole rings they are named as one two three and four and the bridges that are methane groups they are uh, called as alpha beta gamma and delta so this is the structure uh, points of heme now i will show you again the structure of one unit of heme Again, I am uh, uh, repeating and remembering you. I want to remember you that uh, again, this is porphyrin without any R group and with the R substituent, it is called as porphyrin where you will find the methane. Methane is the uh, bridge. It is acting as a bridge in between two pyrrole rings. Now, this is the structure of heme. It is prosthetic group uh, that is it is ha not having any uh, proteinous part. So, in this you can find this iron is in plus 2 form. And so, iron plus porphyrin it is metal of porphyrin and actually it is heme. Here you can see uh, the four pyrrole rings. They can be designated as one, two, three, and four. So uh, I had already uh, told you about its structure in previous lectures on heme proteins. So you can find uh, in the four pyrrole rings there are methyl, vinyl, methyl, vinyl, methyl, propionate, and propionate methyl groups present. So this is a kind of heme B heme B structure it is having so this is a heme part of the hemoglobin and now we will see the globin part of hemoglobin so I had told you that uh, actually the globin part this protein it varies from species to species in which in its amino acid composition and its sequence so sequence of amino acid and uh, the amino acid composition may be different it vary from species to species i had already told you that there are four protein chains so there are four polypeptide chains in case of 
hemoglobin globin protein it has four polypeptide chain or it we can say that there are four subunits two subunits are alpha chains while two subunits are beta chains so it is called as alpha 2 beta 2 so it is having the globin is having two alpha and two beta subunits okay now the alpha chains they contains 141 amino acids so alpha chain is composed of 141 amino acids while this beta chain it is composed of 146 amino acids so 146 amino acids in the beta chain and 141 amino acids in the alpha chain whereas you had studied that in myoglobin only one subunit was there and it was having 153 amino acid residue so this is the main point of difference in between a globin of hemoglobin and myoglobin you can see here here the globin protein is having four subunits while in case of myoglobin the globin was having only a single chain that was having 153 amino acid residue and these four subunits of globin protein they held together by non-covalent interactions like hydrophobic interactions ionic interactions and hydrogen bond so these four subunits they are joined by a hydrophobic ionic and hydrogen bond interactions and each subunit contains a heme group because there are four subunits and there are four heme groups so each subunit is containing one heme group okay so this is the general structure of hemoglobin you can see here the quaternary structure of hemoglobin so uh, you can see here uh, one this is a ring type of a structure is actually the heme that is prosthetic part of this hemoglobin so there are four heme one heme second heme third heme and four heme so this is the heme group uh, which has been shown by the circle part and this red colored uh, round shape uh, circle is actually Fe2 plus so this is heme so one heme two heme three heme and four heme so there are four hemes and four protein subunits okay so these are the helix of proteins so one two three and four so four subunits are there so two beta so this is beta chain and this is also beta chain this is alpha chain and this is also alpha chain so four subunits of globin and four heme together with combined to form hemoglobin so this is the quaternary structure these globin these subunits they are joined together via weak forces or may be a test via hydrogen bonding or ionic bonding or hydrophobic interactions this is the another view of quaternary structure of hemoglobin where you find this is one heme this is the second heme this is ball uh, model and this is the third heme and this is the fourth heme and around each heme you will find one subunit okay and these subunits uh, two are red and two are blue so one is alpha and other is beta so alpha is made up of 141 amino acids while beta is made up of 146 amino acids so this is the three-dimensional uh, structure of hemoglobin now what are heme pocket pockets so these heme they form generally heme pockets each protein subunit forms a heme pocket and contains hydrophobic amino acids inside and hydrophilic amino acids at the surface so generally these uh, protein subunits they form a pocket like a structure where the oxygen will going to bind to the iron center and inside because the oxygen is a non-polar molecule so this uh, these amino acids they are hydrophobic in nature 
the inside and outside surface the hydrophilic amino acids are present the hydrophobic amino acids they enhances the binding of oxygen molecule that is a non-polar molecule to the iron center the heme pockets of alpha subunits are appropriate for o2 molecule entry it means the alpha subunits forms some kinds of heme pockets that are suitable for the entry of oxygen molecules and uh, it, it means that uh, oxygen molecule entry cannot occur through the beta subunits okay so be the heme pockets formed by the beta subunits they are not of appropriate size for oxygen molecules so the oxygen molecule entry takes place through the heme pockets that are generated by the alpha subunits okay and uh, in, in case of beta subunits the entry of o2 molecule is blocked by the some amino acid like valine okay uh, so uh, if if we if we know that uh, hemoglobin is approximate tetramer of myoglobin so as myoglobin can bind one molecule of oxygen hemoglobin can bind four molecule of oxygen each heme plus one subunit it can add up one oxygen molecule and there are four subunits so four oxygen molecules can bind to the one molecule of hemoglobin now you can see the specific characteristic of hemoglobin in case of hemoglobin you can see these r groups that are present in the pyrrol rings they arranged like a picket fence so picket fence means kher body so picket fence like a structure heme will form this hemoglobin so heme will form this picket fence like structure so that the, uh, the entry of non-polar molecule can be easily in the form that it can easily release or it can bind to this iron center so this kind of picket fence structure is formed by porphyrin like myoglobin there are two states or two forms of hemoglobin so uh, one state is deoxyhemoglobin and other is oxyhemoglobin this deoxyhemoglobin state is also called as d state and oxyhemoglobin state is also called as r state okay so we will discuss one by one them uh, the four protein subunits present in the hemoglobin are held by weak interaction i had already told you these are held together via weak interactions their relative position is different in oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin so due to their different relative positions in oxyhemoglobin and uh, deoxyhemoglobin uh, the the they have different kind of states or forms that are t and r states so t and r states are uh, on the basis of different relative positions of these protein subunits in hemoglobin so first we will study the deoxyhemoglobin so deoxyhemoglobin is the called as d state in this deoxyhemoglobin iron is coordinated to five ligands no oxygen is present four are through the four nitrogen of the four pyrrol rings and fifth one is the histidine residue of the protein so no oxygen is present the iron is present as high spin center it is having d6 configuration the radius of high spin iron is 92 like in case of myoglobin so the these uh, conditions uh, are remain the same as that of myoglobin and it has a pseudo octahedral environment that is it is having the square pyramidal geometry a square pyramidal environment of the uh, iron center okay now the iron second lies 42 picometer above the plane of nitrogen atoms of the porphyrin ring okay we had already studied that the iron in the deoxymyoglobin it is above the plane of the porphyrin ring uh, that is above 42 picometer and here in case of hemoglobin deoxyhemoglobin this conformational characteristic is known as doming again i am showing you the structure of deoxyhemoglobin 
So here you can see the one unit of deoxyhemoglobin in which you will find that this iron molecule, this iron cation is below this porphyrin ring and it is a kind of a square pyramidal geometry and uh, the fifth ligand is the stridine and you can find that the configuration of this iron center is T2G4 EG2 because it is a high spin complex here and uh, this conformation is called as this conformational change is called as doming so due to for firing doming fe2 orients towards histidine 93 so this is histidine 93 and this uh, iron center it orients towards this histidine protein and it causes some distortion okay you, you can see the distortion in the for firing ring and this iron center, it is uh, below the plane of this porphyrin center. And this conformation is strained. So this is a strained conformation or we can say this is a test. This is tense conformational state. So it is called as a T state. Tense conformational state due to the orientation of this iron towards this histidine 93. This state is called as T state. Okay. In this case, the H and ionic bonds they restrict the movement of monomer subunit. So this monomer subunit cannot its its movement it restricts due to hydrogen and ionic bond in between the globin subunits. Okay, and this deoxyhemoglobin it has low affinity towards oxygen molecule. The other form is oxyhemoglobin, and this is called as the R state. So in oxyhemoglobin like myoglobin, it in this iron is coordinated to six ligands. Oxygen is present there. The iron center is low spin complex. It is diamagnetic in nature. The configuration becomes T2G6 like myoglobin. And again, in this case, the high spin iron center is having 75 picometer. Uh, this uh, radii due to the uh, electronic presence only in the T2G set and the octahedral environment is present around the Fe2 center and in this case the Fe2 lies in the plane of nitrogen atoms of the porphyrin ring okay the movement of Fe2 plus actually it pulls the histidine ligand with it so it become a relaxed state or it is called as r conformational state and here the o2 binding destabilize some of the hydrogen and ionic bond between alpha and beta dimers okay so the hydrogen and ionic bonds they destabilize due to oxygen binding so there is high affinity of oxygen to the iron center in the R conformational state. This is the R state or oxyhemoglobin, uh, one unit. Actually, this is the one uh, subunit of oxyhemoglobin. And here you can find that this iron center, it comes to the plane of this porphyrin ring so that this molecule become relaxed uh, by the addition of this oxygen molecule. This becomes relaxed and there uh, is the destabilization of uh, alpha and uh, the hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds in between the alpha and beta uh, dimers okay so it the state is called as the relaxed or r state it has more high affinity for the oxygen molecule now come to the uh, special term in case of hemoglobin that is cooperativity so this cooperativity of binding is found in hemoglobin because there are four subunits, uh, there are four tetramers, four heme and four uh, globins are there 
and uh, these four subunits they show cooperativity behavior what is cooperativity behavior actually it is the binding of one oxygen molecule in one subunit it increases or encourages the binding of o2 molecule in another subunit so if one oxygen is bind to one subunit then it become easy to bind oxygen with the other subunits so this phenomena is called as cooperativity or cooperative or positive cooperative effect okay so if one hemoglobin unit if if one subunit will bind oxygen it will form oxyhemoglobin then this oxyhemoglobin it 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 facilitates the addition of one oxygen to the other hemoglobin and then third and then uh, to the second subunit and then third subunit and then fourth subunit so that uh, we will get the hbo2 uh, whole four in one hemoglobin four oxygen molecule can bind so four molecules can easily bind because of the positive cooperativity of binding of oxygen molecule one oxygen molecule binding to one subunit it encourages it enhances the binding of o2 molecule in the other subunit okay uh, and loss uh, and in the same way loss of oxygen from one heme decreases the affinity of o2 by the other hemes so likewise you will find that if one oxygen molecule will uh, release from one heme it will enhance the uh, the release of other o2 molecule from the other heme so this is a kind of uh, cooperativity uh, one is the cooperativity for the addition of uh, this oxygen molecule binding of this oxygen molecule to the heme subunits and the other is the release of these oxygen molecule from the subunits so both are uh, the kind of cooperative behavior in the hemoglobin and o2 o2 generally it binds reversibly in hb molecule so it can bind and it can release accordingly as per the need of the biological system so this is the cooperative behavior one subunit encourages or decreases the binding of oxygen molecule or the release of oxygen molecule and here we will find that as we go from one molecule to four molecule of oxygen the the equilibrium constant goes on increasing this is the stablest compound uh, among uh, these four hemoglobin oxygen molecules so oxyhemoglobin this is the most stable one now in case of uh, hemoglobin one effect we have to learn that is bohr effect so bohr effect is an important phenomena in the human system and here you will find that according to bohr effect the affinity of hemoglobin towards o2 molecule is ph dependent so it depends upon ph at higher ph or we can say in lower concentration of hydrogen ions more affinity of hp is towards oxygen molecule means at higher ph the oxygen molecules they tightly bind to the hp molecule and at lower ph value there is less affinity of hemoglobin towards oxygen molecule so at lower ph release of o2 molecule it becomes easier okay so this bohr effect is primarily responsible for the release of o2 from the oxy hemoglobin to the tissue so this bohr effect is a very important phenomena you will find during the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, the 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 transport actually it governs through the bohr effect because the affinity of hemoglobin towards oxygen it depends upon the ph so the bohr effect is simply the effect of affinity of hemoglobin towards oxygen that is ph dependent now we will actually uh, study the functioning of hemoglobin okay so how this hemoglobin transport carbon dioxide and oxygen in the tissue and uh, in the lungs 
so what uh, is the way of transportation of carbon dioxide and oxygen in tissue and lung and here you will find the involvement or this involvement of myoglobin also so i will also have explained you with the help of a diagram first i will explain you the written matter uh, actually during the aerobic metabolism during respiration uh, the the living systems they generally they expel they release carbon dioxide okay so this carbon dioxide can be directly bind to the hemoglobin some of the part may directly bind to the hemoglobin and thus release of protons will take place or this carbon dioxide can be transported in the blood as bicarbonate so you can find that this carbon dioxide can react with water aqueous medium of our blood in presence of carbonic acid it can be converted into carbonic acid in presence of carbonic anhydrase and this carbonic acid it, it is in equilibrium with its ions so again h plus ions produce so here you can see the production of h plus ions during the transportation of carbon dioxide this time i am talking about the tissue okay so in the tissue what kind of reactions they are occurring so you you find that uh, the h plus ions they are produced after consumption of carbon dioxide either via aqueous medium of the blood or via the reaction with the hemoglobin and here the hemoglobin acts as buffer immediately the hemoglobin binds the released protons okay and in the tissue four oxygen molecules are released for binding of every two protons to hb so if the hb binds the release the protons so two protons when two protons bind so four molecules of oxygen molecules they are released uh, in 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 uh, in the uh, F, uh, the two protons uh, they when they bind to the hb four uh, oxygen molecules they are released in the tissue and uh, during this uh, process hco3 minus that is uh, bicarbonate it moves to the blood cell uh, from the blood cell to the plasma and to maintain the electrical neutrality the chloride from the plasma will shift from uh, to the cell so this is called as chloride shift now let uh, now uh, i will explain you with the help of a figure now with the help of this figure you can easily understand about the uh, the uh, carbon dioxide and o2 transportation in the tissue okay so this is the uh, red blood cell and this is the tissue cell okay muscles so you can find that uh, in this first this carbon dioxide it comes from the respiration process so this released carbon dioxide it can react with the aqueous medium of the blood and that can form the carbonic acid and this carbonic acid can form this proton okay some of the carbon dioxide can react with the hemoglobin and uh, this will form hbco2 okay and when this is occurring okay so during this reaction this uh, bicarbonate it goes from this uh, cell to the plasma okay so this negative charge is going out of the cell to create the the, the neutrality of the blood cell this chloride from the plasma it come inside the cell so this is known as the chloride shift so chloride is coming from plasma to the cell to maintain the electrical neutrality of this bicarbonate ion okay now i had told you that this h plus ion when it is produced then immediately the hemoglobin can take up this proton so hemoglobin present in this tissue it will uh, it will immediately take this proton and form this h hb and from where this hemoglobin comes this hemoglobin is comes from oxyhemoglobin so oxyhemoglobin is present in this red blood cell and as the concentration of carbon dioxide increases the protons increases so this hbo2 will dissociate towards this right side and it will 
uh, then uh, then release O2 and HB. This HB will react with this hydrogen ion immediately. Thus, you can find that here the oxygen is released in the blood cell. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, this this released oxygen is goes to this tissue you can see from uh, blood cell to tissue this oxygen is released and the carbon dioxide from the tissue cell actually the respiration process is taking place in this tissue cell due to metabolism you can say that due to metabolic processes the carbon dioxide release takes place in the tissue this carbon dioxide uh, comes through the uh, uh, this blood through the plasma to the blood cell and here you can find the production of h plus ion this h plus ions and in this blood cell there is oxyhemoglobin and this oxyhemoglobin due to presence of this H plus ion it dissociate into O2 and hemoglobin and this hemoglobin will react with this H plus ion thus it, it uh, transfer this oxygen towards the tissue cells okay and this carbon dioxide from the tissue cell it goes to the uh, red blood cell. The reverse reactions they are taking place in the lungs okay so in the lungs you will find the deoxyhemoglobin secretes proton you had find in the previous uh, slide that uh, the hb was reacting with the h plus now this h plus was released from hhb and this h plus was combined with hco3 minus to form h2co3 this h2co3 dissociates to co2 and h2o and this co2 is expelled okay so i will show you uh, with the help of the another diagram now this is the reversal reaction that is occurring in the lungs okay so this is the lung and this is the uh, the blood cell uh, uh, okay so here you will find that this deoxyhemoglobin is uh, is taking up this oxygen and converts into oxyhemoglobin and release protons these protons they react with the bicarbonates and thus form carbonic acid and this carbonic acid it dissociates into co2 and h2 in presence of carbonic anhydrase and this co2 is goes from this blood cell to the lung cell so from there the, the co2 can expel and the the intake of this oxygen this oxygen from the lungs they come to the blood, red blood cell and here the deoxyhemoglobin it, it it take up the oxygen to convert into uh, oxyhemoglobin so this is the cycle uh, in the lungs this is the reverse of that is occurring in the tissue the Bohr effect is very important uh, effect that has physiological significance. Uh, it increases the delivery of oxygen upon demand. So wherever there is demand, it increases the oxygen up, uh, demand. It, it de the delivery of the oxygen at the demand, and it also increases the binding of oxygen to the hemoglobin in the lungs okay so it increases the binding of oxygen uh, with the hemoglobin in the lungs as well as when it is required it can be supplied on the basis of its demand to the tissues where myoglobin is present as the uh, storage part of the oxygen let's i will explain you with the help of example the effect of bohr's effect Okay. So, if we see in the normal life, if we are doing some exercises, okay. so during the exercise, uh, metabolic processes, uh, they become fast in the muscles. So, we are doing some exercise. So, mus due to muscular exercise, uh, there is the increased production of carbon dioxide and some lactic acid. Carbon dioxide and lactic acid, both are the acids they goes to the blood okay so this carbon dioxide will go to the blood and the lactic acid also goes to the blood and thus they increase the hydrogen and concentration in the blood uh, and we can say that they decrease the ph in the blood and this hydrogen ion and carbon dioxide they can react with the 
hemoglobin you can see carbon dioxide is reacting with the hemoglobin and this h plus ion is also reacting with the hemoglobin so you will find that this uh, oxyhemoglobin will dissociate towards this direction so that this hb will react with h plus ion so it is releasing o2 and this o2 will go to the uh, tissue so you can see that this binding binding of h plus ions with the hp and co2 with the hb it increases the uploading of oxygen in the uh, tissue and where myoglobin is present okay so this is the effect of bore effect as the acid increases in our body during the exercise this acid would react with the hemoglobin and from where this hemoglobin comes this uh, oxyhemoglobin will dissociate to form hemoglobin and this ox release oxygen will go to the uh, it will upload to the myoglobin that is present in the tissue cell. So this is the effect of pH on the uh, CO2 and O2 transport in the tissue. Now I will again discuss you about the cooperativity of binding in hemoglobin which can be explained with the help of a curve. And that curve is known as the oxygen dissociation curve. So I, uh, we will uh, and, uh, this uh, draw the curve for uh, this myoglobin and hemoglobin, and then will then we will find the cooperativity behavior of this hemoglobin. So this is the oxygen dissociation or binding curve for myoglobin and hemoglobin. So this is the curve for myoglobin, and this is the curve for hemoglobin. And uh, this uh, is showing the uh, comparison of affinity of oxygen for myoglobin and hemoglobin. In this curve, the concentration of oxygen is varied in terms of partial pressure. And uh, you can see that for a myoglobin, uh, it is hyperbolic curve. For hemoglobin, it is a sigmoidal curve. The curve of myoglobin indicating that a single equilibrium constant for binding of O2 is obtained. I will show you with the help of equation. Okay. However, the equilibrium constant for hemoglobin is more complicated and up to four molecules of oxygen binds to one hemoglobin. The shape of the binding oxygen binding curve of hemoglobin, it shows that oxygen binding sites in hemoglobin, they interact so that binding of one molecule of oxygen to one heme group, it enhances or facilitates the binding of oxygen to the other heme unit. And, and this sigmoidal curve shows the cooperative behavior of hemoglobin. The graph shows that oxygen binds more tightly with the myoglobin as compared to the hemoglobin. And in this figure, we can find that the partial pressure of oxygen that is needed for 50% of myoglobin. You can see the partial pressure or the concentration of oxygen that is needed uh, for 50% saturation of myoglobin is about 1 mmHg. While for hemoglobin, it is around 26 mmHg. So this can uh, be concluded as that the, the binding uh, of myoglobin for oxygen is more as compared to Hb and the sigmoidal curve is showing that cooperativity of hemoglobin, cooperativity of oxygen binding in the hemoglobin. This is the equilibrium constant for myoglobin while this is the equilibrium constant for hemoglobin and the 2.8 exponent for dioxygen showed that the binding of 4 oxygen molecule is not independent. So this uh, oxygen binding is uh, dependent on the binding of oxygen molecule on one subunit. So it is not independent. The binding of O2 is not independent. So this equilibrium constant is showing such kind of result.
So finally, if we show the functions of hemoglobin, then there are two main functions of hemoglobin. It can transport oxygen molecule from lungs to tissue and transport carbon dioxide and proton from tissue to lungs. So this, these are the overall functions of hemoglobin. So I uh, will uh, conclude the lecture now. So in this lecture, we have discussed about the hemoglobin, the heme part of the hemoglobin, the globin part of the hemoglobin. Likewise, in the case of myoglobin, in case of hemoglobin also, the protein part that is globin, they, they will work in the similar way as that in case of myoglobin. They also protect the binding of uh, oxygen molecules, uh, oxygen molecule in the, uh, uh, the uh, heme or, and they also decrease the binding of carbonyls. So the, the functions of the globin protein is the same as in case of myoglobin. Then we have seen the quaternary structure of hemoglobin where we will find that uh, we had find that there are four heme groups and four subunits of proteins. Then we had discussed two states or two forms of hemoglobin T state and R state. So there are two states T state and R state. R state is oxyhemoglobin while T state is deoxyhemoglobin state. Then we had studied the cooperative behavior of hemoglobin, cooperative binding of oxygen molecule in the hemoglobin. And in that context, uh, we had studied the oxygen dissociation binding curve of myoglobin and hemoglobin. Then we had studied the Bohr effect and you had seen that the Bohr effect is very important during the transportation of oxygen molecule and carbon dioxide molecule. Uh, uh, this, uh, the, the transportation of oxygen molecule from lungs to uh, the uh, tissue and uh, carbon dioxide from tissue to the lungs. And these are the concluding remarks of this lecture that hemoglobin transport oxygen from lungs to the muscle tissue and CO2 from the tissue to the lungs, while myoglobin stores O2 in the muscle tissues and deliver when required. So this is all about uh, hemoglobin. In the next lecture, we will discuss about some differences uh, differences between myoglobin and hemoglobin, differences between T state and R state, and differences between uh, deoxyhemoglobin, myoglobin, and oxyhemoglobin and myoglobin. So, thank you very much.